It used to be that I thought I had a lot of agency over my life. I thought that my decisions uh, had far-reaching consequences and immediate effects. And I thought the same thing of humankind, that we had a lot of agency, that uh, the decisions that we made as a, as, a, as a people, as a collection of beings, was uh, of consequence, that it meant something, what we decided as beings on the planet. And now as I get older, more wise, I think, I hope, I realize that we have very little agency, that I have very little agency. My agency is very limited, and that agency is mostly related to how I choose to feel. I don't even have agency over what I'm going to think about necessarily, because the stimuli from the world around is far beyond my control. Understanding this and having a, a newfound plan to deal with it is um, pretty interesting. In one place, it says acceptance is the answer to all our dilemmas. And I really like that because it's a, a prelude to understanding a larger principle, and that is the love of fate. And it's not a new concept. It's uh, one that was really developed by Friedrich Nietzsche and his idea of amor fati, the love of fate. And that, as I've thought more and more about that and practiced it in a way, I realize it's probably one of the most successful things I've ever done in working with the caprice of the reality I find myself. And it is indeed caprice because there doesn't seem to be very much logical consequence or logical stimulus which activates the world around me. The problems are ancient, bloodletting and all sorts of behavior that's just horrifying. That hasn't really changed very much. The, the wars of the ancients are reflected in the wars of the moderns. And we see them with incredible devastation. And it's, uh, it's something to behold. And so I have to think, well, how can I make reason of this? How can I, you know, do something that's creative and interesting that affects me directly? And that is my subject of the meditation for today and has been for a while. It's the amor fati of my life, of Henry, the love of my fate, the reconciliation of my fate to me, to my personality. And how will I engage the fate that I find myself in, either by personality or by spirit? Now, I'm, I'm really saying that I'm not seeing myself in this scenario as being transcendent. I'm being actually very much present. I don't think reality has shown that transcendence in any real way is effective. Humanity has not been able to transcend itself. The wars are here. The dilemmas of humankind are still with us, you know, right in front of us all the time. So there's no transcendence there. I can't transcend the events of my day. What I can do is love them. I can love me and love them. And I think in that is a, uh, a understanding, a uh, comprehension a wisdom work that is really powerful. And it is not a wisdom work which takes me out of the reality I am in, but it lets me embrace the reality I am in and thereby finding out more about it in that embrace because there's more to it than we uh, originally or initially sense. And I think that's the same purpose as meditation. 
meditation on the events of my day take me deeper into those events and I find in them meaning that I wouldn't have found had I not chosen to meditate on them. In other words, if I hadn't selected the events of my life to consider, I would have very little consideration of myself. It sounds like a little bit of a tongue twister, but it, it's really not. It is, how much are you going to devote to your understanding of yourself, to my understanding of my own experience? How will I love that? How will I bring that uh, love of life, a love of fate, to a proper focus, to a proper embrace? So I'm not interested in transcending fate nor changing fate. There is something to be said about just loving fate, which is beyond acceptance. It's something more than that. It's a love of life and a, a innate sense of humor about it because I think that's the one of the things we find in human relationships is a, a great deal of humor if we're willing to look. And if we can find that humorousness, we take some of the dire <laughs> reckonings out of it, which is a good thing. I mean, I like that. I like thinking that way. And so my urge for you is to begin to practice amor fati, the lover of of fate, the lover of your fate. Being the lover of your fate is the best way, I think, to, to describe it. And to love the fate of others, not to criticize them for the fate that has befallen them, but to wish them the best in their reconciliation, their acceptance, and their love of what it is that has happened to them and to us and to this earth. Loving the fate of this earth is a really interesting thing. And we can see history in a very different way. We can see the axial age unfolding and the development of writing and changes in consciousness as a result of our ability to create uh, logical thought, propositional thinking, and how writing has changed who we are because it has enticed us into a kind of transcendent world that I don't think is necessarily accurate, which brings us from a eminent world where the gods of this world were eminently right here with us. And so there was a very personal connection. And now there's a transcendence. So which is best? Which do you think would be the most wise choice? And I think what I'm saying is, to be very direct, it is not a choice we make. It's a choice that we accept and we love for the fact that we don't really have to choose. There is no choice that's of import. Fate has done what it will do. And it is up to us to see that, embrace it, and love it because it is life force, life force unfolding. And it's, it's not a, a wise thing, I don't think, to try and transcend that life force, to look for something different. That's not what I'm suggesting, that we're not going to select another reality and say, ah, I'd rather be there. No, I think the thing is to be here and right here with ourselves as we uh, embrace the fate that is our life and coming to grips with uh, the machinations of fate and where does fate come from is a meditation in and of itself. And I, I think it's a, a creative, poetic effort, which I find to be sublime. So I urge you to meditate on your fate and to love your fate and to embrace it and to embrace others who are trying to do the same thing and fighting your fate 
Fighting the fate of humankind, I think, is a thankless and hopeless task, which I hope none of you, including myself, will engage in, because it stifles the life force, which is the hope we have. It's my hope. It's, I love life force. I love it a lot. I love what it does for me. It lets me see springtime and the budding of flowers and shrubs and the birth of bees and birds. That life force is not going to be transcended. And realizing that is the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. Amen.